Afternoon folks, in the truck, Davy out the truck and in his office at home in Salisbury. It's a wee bit overcast but it's dry and it's about 8 degrees I think it is. I'll have a quick check. Ah, 8 degrees. Right, eh, Friday, review of the weekday. Okay, so here we go. Um, straight in. Monday, Environmental Secretary says there's no guarantee in food standards. Um, at the end of this uh, transition period. In other words, they don't want to stay aligned with EU food standards. They're probably going to get aligned with US food standards. Not making the farmers happy. But, <laughs> yeah, but that's only part one. Part two's a doozy. The Treasury comes out and says, as far as it goes, farming and fishery is not important to the UK economy. <laughs> Oh, these bloody farmers and fishermen that voted for Brexit. Hey, you're going to go tits up. <laughs> hey, chlorinated chicken. Pro skies, you brought it on yourselves. <laughs> hey, anyway. <laughs> yeah, to make matters worse. Um, <laughs> hey, Bojo's made it clear that we're not going to stay aligned on human rights either. The British Bill of Rights will be brought out. I'll be scrapping everything. All your protections will go, your workers' protections. <laughs> uh, your right to a private home life. Your right to a private life. Uh, your right to um, food and shelter. All your basic human rights are going to get right out of one day. Your cattle now. <laughs> We're all just slaves now. <laughs> no, and Brexit alters and Dominic Commons, as we already know. As he said about the civil service. The, the thing about the civil service and these permanent secretaries is these are the people that actually run the UK. You know, these politicians in the parliament, they don't run bugger all. They just make legislation. The civil servants and the, 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 um, the civil service and all the different departments are who runs the UK. The politicians, the politicians don't run it. So the attack on the civil service by Dominic Cummins is going to cause more chaos and more, and more upheaval than anything you can imagine so far. So that ought to be fun. Right, that's Monday for you because basically, you know, Monday's always a sort of quiet news day. We got all the crap at the weekend. Tuesday. Bojo does what Bojo does. Eh? Bojo gets in front of the cameras and lies his bloody... <laughs> and lies his heart out. He sees if I did the hospital and we shaking hands with coronavirus sufferers. He actually went to the hospital in the middle of the night and I quite wanted a couple of doctors and was probably put at the bloody door. It wasn't even wasn't even a press world. I don't think I, I think he sneaked in the middle of the night to avoid the press. Right. <coughs> <coughs> Tuesday it was also announced that a Spanish pharmaceutical company called Pharma Mar think that they might be a couple of weeks away from um, a coronavirus a, um, vaccine. That's not bad. Or a cure. Um, UK Health Secretary, UK um, Health Secretary, no health, uh, UK Health Secretary says benefit claimants who come down with a coronavirus and miss um, job centre appointments could well be sanctioned. Uh, yeah, you got to love these guys, ain't you? There's no humanity in the bass uh, and the people in them at all. They don't nearly swore. I've given up swearing in these broadcasts. Right, and uh, uh, just to get Tuesday uh, running, running with full strength. The FT's done a wee. Um, the Financial Times has had a look at the potential trade deal with, with, between the UK and US, and have worked out that it'll only boost. UK GDP by 0.16% over the next 15 years. That's not taking into account the amount of trade we're going to lose with the EU. That's just, oh, the UK, US trade deal is going to be worth to the UK over the next 15 years is 0.16%. You couldn't make this stuff up. Um, eh, and the other thing is, eh, on Tuesday, um, it uh, uh, appears that the Scottish Tories, who are bereft of absolutely any policies, except for a nay second independence referendum, have got to the point now where it's just smears and a, a 
the xenophobia. Um, uh, Mike Russell was subject to a smear campaign by some Tory up there in the in north northwest, um, and he the what was his name again? Richie. Um, right, uh, Mr. Richie, who is the the chair of the North East Conservative Association, tell Christian Allard uh, to get back to France. He couldn't make this stuff up. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Right. Um, aye, and uh, another thing that happened is the... Uh, oh, we'll leave that to Wednesday. Wednesday, Tory sex pest councillor in uh, Aberdeen gets uh, suspended for duty for three months by the body that looks after a uh, conduct in public life in Scotland. Three months for a convicted sex offender. She about three months. The bugger should be booted out of office and banned if you get into public office ever again. Alright. Um, also on Wednesday, Tory MP wants change to the to employment law. In other words, dumping EU standards on the 48 hour week, which actually started in the UK under the under Factories Act 1972 and then 1976. We are we by Jiggery Poker in 1975 in the middle. So they want to scrap the 48 hour working week and have people work as many hours as it takes. They want to change the law so that employers can force the employees to mail them a 48 hour week to make up for the shortfall in a EU um, workers that won't be entering the country. So there goes your 48 hour week folks. 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. Look at the way they work in America. Some of them day 6 day weeks, 7 day weeks at 10, 12 and 14 hours a day. That's your future. Right, what else we got on Wednesday? Aye, and a further, and a further blow to half what farmers and fishers, eh, and fishermen who voted for Brexit. It's been announced that the Chancellor intends to scrap the um, discount rate and the, the discounted duty on red diesel. So the farmers and the fishermen will be running their boats on white diesel for new own at full price. <laughs> Get that around you. Um, and uh, the other thing on Wednesday, the zombie party in Scotland, bliss, British Labour in Scotland are fighting like rats, throat cats in a sack. On Sunday, Neil Finlay, one of the most prominent, uh, prominent MSPs, and one that maybe have a wee bit of promise, <laughs> actually, uh, he said that uh, the Labour Party should get a uh, square again, a uh, square ahead, and they have two which started a real barney where eh, we had Labour's one and only MP remember this is a zombie party they're dead you know they're, they're out the game how you had one and only MP coming out saying the only way Labour's going to make any advances is to stand square behind um, naughty, ind eh, naughty independence and naughty NDF2 and the newly promoted halfwit I'm not even sure she qualified as a halfwit Jackie Bailey um, who's now the deputy leader for a uh, Richard the uh, Richard Leonard? I know I hear you shouting. Who I don't know who he is either. Um, <laughs> uh, has said that the only way for the party to make any progress is to uh, say not the end of F two and not the independence. Then they learnt nothing. The reason why they have any support is because of their stance in the constitution. So they're going to double down in their stance in the constitution. And the Tories' pocket, she couldn't make it up. No, you could. Right, Thursday. What are we going Thursday? Molly Rennie. I mean, we Molly Rennie. The brass neck to tell um, the Justice Secretary, Hums Yusuf, that the Scottish Government are no funding police Scotland properly. Right? This is the guy whose party under Danny Alexander in the, chance, uh, in the Treasury doing in Westminster imposed VAT on police Scotland. Um, it's not paid by any other regional police force throughout the UK. It's only paid, that's only paid by a uh, police Scotland. It's cost them millions and millions of years, uh, a year. And I think over the last day since the creation of this police Scotland, it's about 125 million it's cost the police service in Scotland. They say they haven't to pay that. And their excuse for that is, it's because it's a single force. Well, somebody better tell them that, uh, 
police service in Northern Ireland is a single force as well. Bamport. You couldn't make it up. We all have a bully Rennie, a e, e, pedophile, a, e, you know, you know, his party protected Cyril Smith, his party protected David Steele, who protected Cyril Smith. The amount of damage that party's done to children e, throughout the UK, the pedo party, the pedo, uh, pedo protection party, that's what the Dems are. We, we twat Wally Rennie should be stood down, he should be chased out of office, he should be chased out of public life. He knew what was going on, still knew what was going on, children were being damaged, and they kept their mouth shut. Right, where are we? Oh, aye, Alistair Union Jack, he's a, he's an absolute cracker, him, isn't he? He goes to Holyrood, he actually shows up for a change. And he's sitting in the committee in Holyrood, and he tells the committee in Holyrood as if he's talking to idiots. <laughs> that you, EU migrants come here for benefits and access to the NHS. Obviously, Alistair Union Jack's never left the bloody mainland in the UK, because I have. A wonderful a, a health service in a Germany, great health service in France, great health service in Spain, and you know, under the EU um, health card system, never had to pay for this stuff when we left here. So why, you know, they didn't come here to access their NHS and their benefits at all. The average age of an EU migrant coming to the UK is between sort of 18 and 30. They're young, they're fit, they work hard, they contribute to the economy. They don't take anything out. They don't need health service uh, treatment. They don't need it because they're young and fat. They don't claim benefits because they're too busy working, following the skills gap. So they contribute, they don't take out at all. You've got to wonder about this xenophobic twat that's supposed to be Scottish Secretary. Should they chase him out the bloody chamber and offer his cheek? Unbelievable. What else did we have on Thursday? Thursday was a busy day. <coughs> UK government has stopped giving daily updates on coronavirus. Um, how many patients and where the hot spots are? <coughs> the coronavirus is starting to look like it's big a hoax. Uh, it's beginning to look like a hoax, actually. Well, I think we're up to, uh, we're up to 80, 85, 90, 100 patients. They're having a laugh. Huh? Meanwhile, supermarkets are having a ball. They can't sell enough hand sanitizer. People are uh, <laughs> people are uh, stop piling for this. Absolutely nuts. Ah, you couldn't make it up. Eh. Oh, I and, and another funny one. And all oh, and oh, and Thursday. Uh, <laughs> you can tell see you. That the Royal Navy is going to protect Scottish way, uh, British waters. <laughs> twenty nine ships, uh, two hundred twenty nine captains. All oh, about ten of these ships are functional at any one time. Uh, but the good news is, apparently there's a bunch of guys getting trained to use canoes. <laughs> ah, you couldn't make this stuff up. Unbelievable. Where are we? No, oh, we're still on Thursday, but it looks it. Oh, we're on Friday. Where are we? <coughs> oh, aye, that's a cracker. UK immigrants in Spain who like to call themselves expats for some mad reason are, uh, and who in bought and own mass voted for Brexit are worried about their future in Spain. <laughs> ah, yeah, 1.5 million uh, lobster red pensioners heading by <coughs> because they're worried about getting their pensions in Spain and they're worried about healthcare in Spain. How well you get what you vote for your people, your silly people. Welcome back to the rain, the wind, and the everything else. God knows what we're going to do. But you've no who's to put two seats to pick you up in, and uh, most of you are English, and your English healthcare system's failing. <laughs> ah, lovely jubbly. Oh, aye, aye. What else come out? Hey, aye. Today it's been announced that so far Brexit costs and Brexit preparation costs have been four point four million. I wonder how much of that's attributed to Chris Graven and his feelings. <laughs> the ferry company that turned out to be a pizza shop and ended up having to give him compensation of about 1.5 million for never being able to provide never any ships or nothing. And their terms and conditions was a pizza menu. <laughs> and then, of course, they were sued, weren't they? They were sued by Eurotunnel and some of the ferry companies <laughs> because none of this stuff was put out to tender. 
<laughs> ended up paying out a hundred million in compensation. This, the Chris Graylin and his feelings. And he, his attempts to find out what a traffic jam would be like doing it in the in Dover. 88 trucks. <laughs> 88 trucks. I've seen a longer convoy near me. <laughs> ah, dear. Hey, MPs have been very... <laughs> MPs give themselves a 3.1% above inflation, above, above inflation pay rise. Lovely. That takes them up to about 81 six a year. But actually, for what the day, that's no, no, it's not really that great wage. You know, but eh, you know, but throw in expenses. And most of them in the Tory party are definitely done a lot of expenses. Right. But, oh, and another thing that was released today was the stats show that eh, the poorest 5% or the UK population are no better off than what they were in 2004-2005. What makes that quite funny is that eh, <laughs> most of these poor buggers live in the North East England where the red brick walk them down them and up with a boy with Tory wall. These idiots floating for the Tories. Ah, you couldn't make this stuff up. You go to, you, I mean, there is no doubt about it. The English education system is definitely failing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aye, oh, oh, another one, another one for the day. Alistair Union Jack tried to draw himself back for the catastrophe of yesterday. Now says he fails a tunnel when Stevie Bridge in Scotland in Northern Ireland. So he, he even said it's only 22 miles. <laughs> oh, hey, the UK's going to touch up, it's no money, it's bankrupt. <laughs> right, good news story to round up the week a good news story is that the, the National Manufacturing Institute Scotland gets the green light to go ahead, it's going to be next to it's, it's going to be Ura and Shin and next to Glasgow Airport and um, the plan involves a academies um, and the you know, schools own manufacturing to bring Scott to try and make Scotland one of the best places to manufacture anything in the world and to be at the forefront of modern man manufacturing processes. So that's a good news story for today, right? The Scottish Government's a Institute for Manufacturing gets the green light. Go ahead. It will be 52 acres and it'll be out of incident. It's going to be a bloody big place and hopefully it'll be innovating. So that's a good news story to end this one. And, and a wee personal matter. I'd like to thank Lyle, I'd like to thank Lyle Duff and Martin and the team at MGM Services at the Walk End Street in Motherwell for keeping my old banger on the road for another year. I better start looking for another motor, but my wife's fond of that one. It's hard to get shot at. She's still wearing it. <laughs> right, well, anyway, that's a roundup of the week, folks. So in the truck daily, out the truck, in his office, in Salisbury, well, it's overcast, but it's no bad, about seven degrees. Have a nice day.